We've all heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, today on Deeper Dive, Sharon Dasser and I will be interviewing someone whose photos are worth far more than that, Matt Murphy, one of the premier photographers for both stage actors and plays in New York City. There is few people that know as much about brand building as he does. So welcome to Deeper Dives, and let's get into it. So Matt, welcome to Sharon and my professional home, Deeper Dives. Thanks for having me. Here we are, so good to have you. So, you know, just before we even get started, I wanted to talk about more of your background how you got to this point. Yeah, so I, you know, something that a lot of people don't know about me at this point is that I actually started my New York life as a professional ballet dancer. So all of my background really comes from a movement-based profession. I moved here when I was 16. I joined American Ballet Theater as a corps de ballet member. You know, I had my sights set on that being my career for the rest of my life. I was gonna do it until I retired, and you know, I thought that would be when I was 40 or so, but the world had some different plans for me. And when I was about 22, I basically, my body was kind of like, it's time, it's time to take a break from dancing, and it's time to refocus and try something different. So I listened to the universe, and when I was sidelined from my dance career, I said, you know, I'm gonna pick up a camera, I just had this urge to kind of do something that was relatively low impact on my body and something that was still creative. Got my little kit lens and my Canon you know, 30D and started learning how to photograph anything around me. And so I really started by working with uh, the dancers of American Ballet Theater as a photographer. So this leads to a question. You're a dancer, so as an artist, does that help you in your career to work with other artists? Is there a communication that you can, that you have just by the fact that you're in the same wavelength? I mean, completely. I think so much of being a part of the corps de ballet in a, in a company is about being part of the machine, learning how to collaborate, knowing when to step in, knowing when to step back, really being attuned to the way that the kind of entire entity exists together, that really uh, set me up to, even when I wasn't dancing, to know how to communicate well with different performers and how to fit in how I need to fit in on any given set. So when you were making that transition originally, you know, a lot of people, again, you can be super talented, but it's how you get that foot in the door or people you know. Was there anyone that really helped kind of guide you in that progression to where you are as a photographer? Absolutely. There was, I feel like there's so many people that even just offered little bits of advice along the way. You know, a lot of former dancers end up transitioning into photography because oh, interesting. they have an eye for what is the kind of correct positioning for the body. They, you know, there's a whole reason aesthetically that they kind of know what they're doing. So I talked to a couple of different photographers, in particular Aaron Baiano and Rosalie O'Connor, who are two of the kind of biggest ballet photographers in the world. And they were instrumental in answering kind of like, every little question I have where it would be like, what lens do I buy? You know, the kind of initial questions that you have, which you look back on and you're like, oh, I was a little silly to be <laughs> asking this like major, major, major pro, something as silly as that. But I was also, I feel really lucky that I transitioned when I did because I was young and dumb. And I think I just asked questions that I would have maybe stopped myself from asking now or, put my uh, hand out to shake somebody's hand that I would have maybe been second guessing to do now that I'm older and quote unquote know better. The biggest one for me that I just, I look back on and I'm like, what was I thinking? But I'm so glad that I wasn't thinking yeah. in some ways was uh, I had gotten connected with Jerry Mitchell, who is you know a legendary Broadway director and choreographer. And I'd gotten connected with him through this uh, annual fundraiser named, uh, called Broadway Bears. And I had photographed that a little bit and had met him peripherally, but I didn't know him well. You know, I had waved at him and kind of introduced myself once or twice. And when I was in California one summer visiting my husband and his, uh, his family, I saw that Jerry was in town at the Hollywood Bowl. He was doing an all-star production of Hairspray the Musical, which had been on Broadway a couple years before. And I, being you know a 25 year old, was like, I'm just going to email Jerry Mitchell because I saw that he was CC'd on some email that I had in my inbox that I probably shouldn't have been on. And I just emailed him and I said, you know, 
Jerry, it's Matt Murphy. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm in town. I have my camera. I'd love to stop by the Hollywood Bowl casually. And I'd love to photograph the show if you'll have me come by the dress rehearsal. And it couldn't have been, I mean, it really must have been like an hour later. He was like, absolutely, come by, that'd be great. How lucky was I that he did say yes. It's a life-changing moment. It was a completely life-changing moment because not only did it just kind of put me in his orbit in a more substantial way, but when I handed him the photos afterwards, I sent them in to him. He was very sweet and said, you know, I'd, I'd love to get you on my next project in the city if it's possible. And about a year later, he followed up with me and he said, you know, I don't know if you remember that I said this, but like, <laughs> and I was like, I remember, I probably have it framed somewhere. Uh, tattooed in ta my brain. Exactly, tattooed in my brain. And he said, you know, I want to get you on my next show. It's this musical coming in to Chicago and then into the city and it's called Kinky Boots. And he fought to get me on that team. He fought, you know, he had to get me in front of the producers. He had to get me in front of the press teams. I have them to thank as well, but they all like really trusted Jerry to say, here's this kid who has never photographed a Broadway show before. <laughs> Let's put him on a you know, $10 million musical and give him a chance. So I want to roll back just a little bit. Um, when you reached out to Jerry, you weren't quite yet a brand or maybe even knew what that meant, right? Not even kind of a brand. <laughs> I, I barely had a website, I think. <laughs> you know. But... What does that tell anyone who watches this about starting their business? I mean, you have to be like, it's not young and dumb. It's you got to be fearless, right? But adding on to that, I think you were saying, when you were young, you had no problem walking up to anybody, sending yeah. those cold call emails. Maybe as we get older, for some reason, we, we kind of hold back on those things. Yeah, but yeah. and I think I was, I was just hungry. I was really hungry for an opportunity. I had faith in myself enough to know that I had talent. I knew that I was good with dance photography in particular, but I was not a brand. The first time that I sent in a portfolio to get reviewed by the producers for Kinky Boots, it was like a PDF that I put together. You know, I had a website, but I went through and I curated a little PDF and thought maybe it would work. But I think for me, it was about finding the right moment of going, I think this is the right opportunity to put my hand out and say, can you give me a chance? And like knowing that your talent is at least at the level that you can like make that jump a little bit. Because I, if I had done it a year before, I wouldn't have been ready. Mm -hmm.